Good morning everybody. So, we will give one more lecture uh, recalling the trace theorem because we will be using the trace theorem in the weak formulation. So, trace theory basically. So, trace theorems are important because when you are uh, have functions in a function u in L 2 of omega, L 2 of omega functions are defined only almost uh, not for more than that even L p of omega. The functions are defined in an almost everywhere sense. That means, that if the two functions f and g are equal almost everywhere then f and g are regarded as a uh, the same function. So, it is a like an equivalence class. Since the boundary of omega, if you take a boundary of uh, omega, the d omega has measure 0, the Lebesgue measure of d omega is 0. So, one cannot restrict, there is no meaning basically immediately, one cannot restrict u to the boundary immediately at least in a reasonable sense. Same is true say with uh, when same is true same is true if u is also in the Sobolev spaces say w 1 p of omega, but you are going to deal with the boundary value problems. When you are having a boundary value problem, your boundary values are assigned on the boundary. That is a serious issue. So, how do we interpret? So, you need to interpret because if it is a classical solution for example, for an equation anything, if you are looking for a solution in a smooth class up to the boundary, if its continuity is there you can restrict you to the boundary, but you are no longer working with the boundary value problems you are going to work with uh, boundary value problem, but you are not going to work in a smooth space rather you are going to work in Sobolev spaces. These are all the issues and that is why how do we interpret, how do we interpret u if, if u is in w 1 p of omega. So, let me write it, uh, uh, let me uh, state the theorem. So, then the, it is more complicated when you go to w 1 p. So, let me restrict to h 1 or h m spaces if a u is in h 1 of omega or uh, uh, h 1 of say yes h 1 of omega how do we interpret if u is, u is in uh, how do we uh, if u is in h 1 how do we interpret u restricted to the boundary of omega. So, okay. so uh, I will uh, write the general theorem for omega, but when omega is r n plus you can have the uh, you can have an uh, in uh, you can prove the results how to restrict and all that and you can prove the results using Fourier transform which we have done in detail in the uh, last course, but so let me recall that one. So, if you have u is in a, uh, uh, if you have your h 1 of r n plus the theorem I will state it more clearly thing, uh, later. If you have u is in h 1 of r n plus d of r n plus is not dense. So, you use the density results you see d of r n plus is not dense in h 1 of r n plus h 1 of r n plus is this one ok yeah we will go to that one, but you still you can approximate by smooth function. So, you take c infinity functions on r n then if u is in a c infinity function in r n then you can restrict u to the boundary of r n plus you see because of the smooth function. So, you do that one. Of course, the infinity of R n functions need not be in H 1 of R n. So, probably you have to work with the C infinity of R n and H 1 of R n plus. So, if you have these functions, C infinity functions belongs to H 1 of R n plus, then 
you can restrict you to so and these points here can be associated as x prime 0. So, a general point is x prime x n and the boundary is full r n minus that is the point where you can apply Fourier transform immediately the whole this is r n plus which you know. So, you can do define u x prime 0 okay. that you can do it immediately and then what you can do once you know this u. So, if you define u say you, if you call, call it this is equal to w x prime this is a restriction of u, but starting with u here and then you can actually show that that belongs to L 2 of R n minus you see it is on the boundary. So, the continuous functions in this restricted to that it is in L 2 of R n minus you can do that and you can have an estimate this w or u of x prime 0 l 2 of r n minus is bounded by constant into your norm u into h 1 of r n plus you can do that. So, you have your continuity. So, the restricted functions you have the continuity and this is dense in h 1 of r n. So, you see that is what you do it this is dense in uh, h 1 of r n plus. So, every function in h 1 of r n plus can be approximated by smooth functions, but not compactly supported functions in R n plus, but uh, uh, not compact in R n plus 1 functions. And with this inequality, now you can extend. So, you have on a dense set, you have a function and you have a continuity estimate that gives you, uh, you can extend u. Uh, no, uh, you can uh, rather because it by density now you can define u in h 1 of r n plus you can define an operator this is not point wise. So, you have a linear operator you see this is a uh, previous one is a, li a linear association. So, every u in c in this space you restrict here and which satisfies this estimate. So, this estimate is very important. Once you have a continuity estimate on a dense set to h 1 l 2 of r n plus by the continuity you can extend there. So, you can define an operator gamma naught of h 1 of r n plus linear operator to uh, some space uh, L 2 of R n minus. So, keep that the gamma naught of u is not point wise thing though in uh, practice we always write u. We may not write gamma naught of u all the time, but when you write u restricted to the boundary please, uh, you have to understand it as the boundary values in the sense of trees and then you can also prove gamma naught of u in L 2 of R n minus is less than or equal to constant into norm of u in H 1 of R n plus. This is just Fourier transform is enough, but you can prove more results not this and this I will write it general omega as soon as I finish this for general uh, more general uh, more results not just one more results each one requires a proof this is the first part of this thing and the second part you can actually show that uh, gamma naught maps h 1 of r n plus to h half this is where the difficulty when you go to bounded domains. So, I will not have time here, but here the boundary is r n minus and hence this is defined via Fourier transform you see it is already defined, defined via Fourier transform. But when you have a boundary uh, I will just give some uh, intuitively give some ideas how to define h half of the omega and then uh, you can show that uh, 
continuity with respect to that h half norm is of gamma naught is bounded by this one is continuous. And more than that you can actually prove gamma naught is on to that is very important to again to prove the boundary value problem because every function f given in h half of that that is how your boundary value problem will be dealing with. So, that can be extended uh, uh, to get a function here gamma naught here. and the third part is more interesting what is kernel of gamma naught. Kernel of gamma naught is nothing but uh, h 1 naught of r n plus and this is very interesting in the sense that. So, if gamma naught of v equal to 0 that gamma naught v can be approximated by d r n plus 1 functions ok. So, these are all we have discussed already and given the proofs uh, uh, in the last uh, set of lectures. So, let me write it uh, here the same thing can be extended for other domains omega. So, we will be so if you have so the general theorem you can write. So, you need omega of class C m and you can have more results. So, you need more and more not only you can be restricted if you have h 2 the gradient u will be h 1 and the gradient u will also be restricted and which will allow you to define the normal derivatives. Once you know the grade u restricted to the boundary you can do the thing. So, that is what I am saying. So, there are trace maps uh, depending on the smoothness of the domain. So, there then there exists trace maps. I will put it in one stock everything a gamma which is gamma naught uh, gamma 1 etcetera gamma m m minus 1 this is mapping from h m of r uh, uh, omega to so each one l 2 of boundary of omega you know how to define the using the surface measure etcetera l 2 of omega to m ok uh, such that it satisfies everything uh, 1 its image uh, what is this such that gamma naught of v is v restricted to d omega if everything is smooth. If it is smooth it is the same restriction otherwise it is as an operator you have to do it. Gamma 1 of v is equal to d v by d nu restricted to the boundary such that gamma m minus 1 of v is equal to d power m minus 1 v by d v power m minus 1 restricted to the boundary if v is smooth, v is smooth appropriately ok to restriction for example, it is an m. So, you need the differentiability up to that ok and then it satisfies also this condition for example, v is in c infinity of omega bar then you can do this. So, if you have the smooth functions up to the boundary you may not require c infinity for x c m of omega bar we will do that one ok. So, you can do that boundary case thing. So, the and then exactly like you can write your range range of gamma. So, each time I already told you from h 1 you got h half that means, it is only reduces half. So, each time it will reduce half. So, you have your range will be uh, h minus of m minus j minus half. This is important thing to understand product of j equal to 0 to m minus 1. So, when j equal to 0 that is gamma naught of v will be m minus half gamma 1 of v will be m minus 1 minus half m minus 3 by 2 all these each time for a derivative you take you reduce one derivative for restriction it will lose half derivative ok. And uh, 
uh, that is a one thing it is a on, uh, and it is on to, to this space. So, range of gamma is that one and then the kernel of gamma kernel of gamma is nothing but uh, h m naught of omega. Okay. Yeah. So, that is what uh, you have. So, in particular if you have if you have h 1 naught of omega omega c 1 c 1 then this is nothing but set of all v in h 1 of omega such that gamma naught of v equal to 0. So, in uh, eventually in the main lectures we do not use the notation gamma naught I am repeatedly telling this, but we write only in this sense. So, it is such that v equal to 0 on d omega you see on d omega. So, if omega c 2 then you can have h 2 naught of omega these spaces at least we will be using higher order we may not use it h 2 of omega such that v equal to d v by d nu equal to 0 on d omega you can write this. So, okay. so we will do this one or that one. So, for example, if v is in h 1 of omega for previous case you have uh, gamma naught of v that is we restricted to d omega is smooth otherwise is then we write all these notations this is in uh, h half of d omega if v is in h 2 of omega that will imply your v is in v restricted to d omega is in h 3 by 2. Uh, so, you can solve such a boundary value problems uh, you need these conditions these spaces. So, let me give you some uh, uh, idea the uh, defining fractional order Sobolev spaces itself is uh, uh, difficult thing, but uh, at least for the gamma say for example, d omega with bounded domains with the compact. Uh, let me give you some intuitively how do you do this one. This is again about uh, the way you uh, omega is smooth right. So, omega smooth that is important. So, say c 1 in this case. So, what you basically do is that you can uh, using the compactness you can cover this by like this. Okay, You can do that one and maybe you can put another to eventually to get a partition of unity. So, this is will be your u 1 u 2 like that this about thing and this may be your u naught. So, use that and for each thing you can go to this is how you have defined it smoothness. Smoothness means there exist neighborhoods u 1 u 2 etcetera which will cover using the compactness with the finitely many. So, there will be a map here you see this is your q and then e e this is your g map and then you have your partition of unity psi j partition of unity. This is one of the easiest way I can define for that partition of unity and then you can write your u as summation of psi j of u and you know that the support of psi j is contained in all that use it support of psi j is contained in u j. So, you have your uh, u j u j will be here the psi support of psi j u j will be here because of this quantities also you see. So, support of psi j u u j is open is contained in u j you can do that. So, using this map 
you can define uh, so the uh, it is defined here also so you can take this boundary value so start with u is in uh, smooth then you extend it that is enough so you have your u and then you take this u here via g here so you will get uh, g of psi j of u basically this is and then you uh, once you restrict uh, here the boundary because of the compact support the support on this restriction so you look at your g of psi j of u it is only restricted to x prime 0 you see so it is here and at the boundary it is 0 it is 0 here since it is 0 here you can extend here by 0 so you see so you can extend you can actually define g of psi j of u tilde okay so you demand this to be in h half of r n minus you see okay and then the way thing it should happen for everything all kinds of partitioning if that happens and if you have h half of r n minus 1 we basically say u is in h half of d omega this is the one way of viewing uh, the restricted boundary but then there are different ways of defining fractional order solo spaces uh, probably you can see Adams or something like that maybe other spaces it is not very easy to define fractional order solo spaces here we can use somehow manage using Fourier term so how do you get that because you cannot define the half derivatives directly so the Fourier term form somehow allows you to do that okay so you can not only h half you can define whatever it is you can uh, so if uh, hs you can define that you can do okay that's the way to be defined so let me uh, recall one of the important thing discussed in the previous uh, 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 the num uh, part one of this course uh, just let me recall the integration by parts formula this is the so i want to see which are the formulas which we use now okay integration by parts i'll quickly recall uh, and then i will stop this review article so again what is integration omega is of class c1 c1 and of course you need what is called i will not discuss it uh, where you are when you move along the boundary the sides along the same side of that what we call it basically the orientability so let us not get into all that that is all technicalities of the proofs uh, okay even for the classical thing then integral d i of u so for uh, v d i of u v this is a, a distribution derivative minus u d i of v over omega plus d u by d nu no sorry uh, is not d u by d nu that is the next step u means it is a boundary so first time let me do it gamma naught of u gamma naught of v nu i the ith component of the normal derivative with respect to the surface measure so this is eventually we write it as like this u v nu i d sigma okay so we will do that so this is what the formula we will be writing we will not write gamma not of v and this is true for all u v belongs to h1 of omega this formula you should re remember all the time okay we will be using left and right this formula so in fact as so a spaces many things are got motivated last time 
uh, using to which an attempt to understand the integration by parts. In particular, if the trace values are 0, that if u v at least one of them is in h 1 naught of omega, that implies integral of d i of u v d x is in omega is equal to minus you can interchange you can take the derivative to the other one d x. So, all these formulas are again we will be using plenty may be some useful identities derived from their useful identities and these identities we are again straight away going to use for our thing. So, suppose one suppose u v is in h 2. So, what we can do if u is in h 2 uh, uh, d i of u is in h 1 d i of u d i of v is in h 1. So, that you can take d i of u. So, take d i of u instead of u because d i of u is in h 1 of u. So, what will happen in this one? So, you can take d i of u here d i of d i of u that is uh, and then sum it and then sum it then sum it because what is d i of d i of u summation this is nothing but your Laplace n of u. So, you will have integral of Laplacian of u over omega over v on the right side you have d i of u u d i of v. So, d i of u dot d i of v and sum it this nothing but grade u grade v over omega and here you have uh, instead of gamma naught of uh, u you have d i of u v nu i over d sigma this is the birth. But what is d i of u nu i our summation this is nothing but your normal derivative d nu normal derivative ok. You have your that one. So, that you have your formula. So, this is nothing but uh, integral of d u by d nu v d sigma over the boundary of omega. Again remember this formula do not even spend time to recall it should be there in your mind all the time ok. So, you have that formula plus gradient of u gradient of v ok. So, and this we gradient of u or you already know it d u d i of u d 1 of u etcetera d n of u. So, you have that formula ok and then you can interchange interchange u and v and subtract interchange u and v and subtract when you interchange u and v grade u dot grade v will not change it. So, this may be an identity in fact, this identity we have used uh, even in the first course on partial differential equation u Laplace n of v is equal to integral d u by d nu v uh, minus u d v by d nu you see. So, so your surface integral is basically uh, volume in the type integral is becoming a surface integral. So, you have your and uh, maybe one last identity before we conclude. So, use a different color so that you can I do not want one more page coming here. 
So, suppose u bar I am applying to a vector now u 1 etcetera u n and this belongs to h 1 of omega each component is belongs to h 1 of omega. So, we can apply 1 to u i and sum it these are all again this equation may be useful if you do some Stokes systems. So, what you will get is that so you go back to the first equation. So, if you go back to the first equation if you have so you have uh, your d i of u i that means d u i by d x i and sum it and that is nothing but your divergence ok. So, you will get this will imply integral over omega divergence of u bar v is equal to minus integral of u bar gradient of v yes gradient of v and plus uh, u bar and then u i v i will come when you sum it that will be u bar dot nu v d sigma ok. So, that is correct when you apply u yeah that is correct. So, you see uh, you have one more formula useful in stock systems in particular as a last comment in particular if omega is bounded then v identically 1 is in h 1 and that will imply integral of omega the divergence of v bar is equal to integral of u bar is equal to u bar dot nu ok over d omega you will see again when you study stock system how do you solve divergence u, u bar is equal to the boundary equal to 0 you want to solve the equations like divergence of u bar equal to 0 with u bar equal to g on the boundary leading to some compatibility conditions ok. So, these couple of few identities you can so basically it is the integration by parts and then play with this integration by parts and this is the famous Gauss divergence theorem. You see this is omega to boundary this is the Gauss divergence theorem. So, I will stop here this reviews in the next class uh, we will do some uh, identities and some estimates and little more on your uh, embedding theorems probably if everything is not covered trace theorem we explained in detail many embedding theorem you have seen, but let me recall little more together with uh, some identities which again will be using in the sequel. Thank you. Thank you.